Welcome to another episode of Daily Gym. How to be a better manager in a startup environment. Number one, treat your employees with gratitude. When you think about it, an employee when they join or when a new person joins a startup, they pretty much take a gamble with their career because they could have easily joined a big big corporation that's more established and that has a brand like Nike, Amazon, or Coca-Cola. And when they do decide to switch at some point, they whatever company they want to join, they can look at their resume and see the logo. Even though they don't know what the work exactly entails, they know they've been in in the machine that's Nike, Coca-Cola, or Amazon, and they know that those companies perform well, which then reflects on the candidate itself. While if they've worked with a startup, oftentimes people don't really know what they've done. Sure enough, many people can anticipate that because they've worked with a startup, they probably have a more diverse or deeper skill set than people who have worked in a bigger conglomerate, simply because there's more that had to be done. But there are really good startups and there are really poor ones. And oftentimes a startup will actually fail and go bankrupt. So which one did they work for is very often unknown when people want to make the career switch. At the same time, there are more promotion opportunities. So when you take these things into account as a, as a manager in a startup, the people have taken a gamble on their own career because they either believe in the mission or they think there's some other kind of payoff for themselves that really make it worth their time. So from the get-go, there should be some kind of gratitude for people taking you up on your offer where, while they could have actually gone somewhere else. But that's not enough because when they're doing the work, again, they're not. people are not generally should not be doing the work for you, but you should be working for them. The reason I say that is that they execute all the kinds of tasks that would help you move your agenda forward or help you get closer to the mission or objectives that you're trying to reach. So essentially, they're all trying to help you. And of course, people can be ver- can become very um, against you if you don't treat them properly, which then again affects what you're able to accomplish. So ultimately, you want to create an environment where everybody wants to be able to work together, feels good about themselves, are motivated to do the work, and feel like they're progressing. So that's what you should be able to set up. That's why gratitude is pretty much the base that you have to work with, so that people feel appreciated and acknowledged and welcomed, which is essentially why we human beings always like prefer to be in groups and accepted by other people, so that we can form tribes and societies, so to speak. This then brings me to the second point, which is compliments and criticism. Generally speaking, when we first start out managing people, we have a tendency to focus on the criticism. Because we used to do most of the task ourselves. we quickly focus on whatever went wrong with the task and try to give feedback. And sure enough, there's a merit to giving as much feedback as possible so that the person can learn and improve. There's a real art to how to deliver feedback, which I've talked about in other videos. But the more important part for this video is that I think you should give many more compliments than that you give feedback or criticism. The reason for that is that self-confidence is very fragile. If all you're doing is giving critique or, f- or criticism to people, even if it has the best intentions, at some point somebody will feel like it's never good enough. Of course you can in some ways play the bad cop and have give much more negative feedback or criticism or constructive criticism versus compliments so that when you give the compliment it really really Uh, the person will really value that particular moment. But personally, I feel that the opposite ratio works much better. By giving people much more uh, compliments about actions that you want them to take, that they've taken in a very good manner, by giving those compliments, you're reinforcing that behavior and giving them the confidence that the, the way they were operating was a good one. Then by the time that you give the feedback or the criticism, they will also listen to you because your tendency is to say only good things. So then when you give something that you want them to change, they will definitely listen to you. Which then brings me to point number three, which is that you want to make the employees feel like they are the experts. In the beginning, when people join, very quickly they will look up to you because you've done the work before and they will trust your expertise. But as you get more and more people under your wing, you're you're basically letting them specialize in tasks that you used to do. While you become more of a generalist trying to have an idea of everything, you're not able to keep up with the pace at which other people learn and execute. So after a while, those people will overtake you in terms of experience, skills, and knowledge, which then means that they effectively have overtaken, the student has effectively overtaken the master. From that point on, you should let them be the expert and simply help them guide 
help guide them and help them find their way so that you still are able to provide value to them because there are things that you know or can push them with whether it's from a mental point of view or whether it's from building up the knowledge base or giving putting them in places where they can succeed but you should really let them feel like they are the expert and the, and on that on in that particular field and use whatever they give you in a proper manner finally that brings me to the point of especially if you're a founder don't expect other people to act the same way as you do the reason i say that is that basically the company was your child or if you're a manager your position is again something that the other people don't have so what you expect from them in terms of working hours habits the kind of work they do how they do it you should pretty much stop doing that because it it's, it only backfires and it don't, it's only counterproductive the best it can accomplish is that you feel pressured because people are not doing exactly the what you're doing and you start questioning yourself whether you're being a good manager or not that's all i have for today a few tips of how to become a better manager i hope it was useful for to you if you have any questions or remarks do leave a comment or do send me a message and as always i'll be back with another episode tomorrow have a nice day today